A military helicopter is a helicopter that is either specifically built or converted for use by military forces. A military helicopter's mission is a function of its design or conversion. The most common use of military helicopters is transport of troops, but transport helicopters can be modified or converted to perform other missions, such as combat search and rescue, or CSAR, medical evacuation, or medevac, airborne command post, or even armed with weapons for attacking ground units. Specialized military helicopters are intended to conduct specific missions. Examples of specialized military helicopters are attack helicopters, observation helicopters, and anti-submarine warfare helicopters. And one of the most famous is the Sikorsky CH-53 Super Stallion. Super Stallion is a big name to live up to. It evokes visions of a reliable yet powerful beast capable of carrying large loads across impressive distances. But luckily, this heavy lift helicopter does exactly that. The aircraft has been a mainstay in the U.S. Marine Fleet for several decades now and is still going strong. Although the vehicle is now at the end of its life, it's served the United States military excellently since it's been in operation. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the origins of this beast as well as taking a closer look at the stallion. The original CH-53 was born out of the U.S. Marine's heavy helicopter experimental competition that started in 1962. Sikorsky, a company owned by engineering giant Lockheed Martin, produced what was known as the S-65, which was selected over Boeing's equivalent version. A prototype, dubbed YCH-53A, made its maiden flight in October 1964. It was then called the CH-53A Sea Stallion, with the CH standing for Cargo Helicopter. It went into production and began delivery of the initial helicopters to the military in 1966. In their first iteration, these were powered by two General Electric T-64 GE-6 turboshaft engines with 2,850 shaft horsepower, which could carry a maximum gross weight of 46,000 pounds with 20,000 pounds of payload. Variants of the original Sea Stallion include the RH-53 AD, which were used for minesweeping, then there were the CH-53D, CH-53G, and MH-53HJM. The CH-53D had a more powerful version of the General Electric T-64 engines. Then in October 1967, the U.S. Marine Corps needed a helicopter with a lifting capacity 1.8 times that of the CH-53D, but which could still land on amphibious warfare ships. Sikorsky was already working on an upgrade to the D model, which featured a third turboshaft engine as well as more power in the rotor system. This was known as the S-80 design, which would eventually evolve into the YCH-53E prototype with a seventh rotor blade. This would make its first flight in 1974. Other changes were also seen on the E model versus the previous version. These were a stronger transmission and a fuselage. The main rotor blades were adjusted to be produced with the titanium fiberglass composite. The tail configuration, which previously had a low-mounted symmetrical horizontal design, was improved with a larger vertical tail. Another significant improvement was the new automatic flight control system. This would help prevent the pilot from overstressing the aircraft. There were further changes in the development and prototype phase, which led to an initial production contract which was awarded in 1978. Introduction into military service came three years after, in February 1981. In total, the Marines and Navy chose to purchase an initial order of 177 helicopters. Over their current lifespan, a total of 227 machines have been built, and 180 of them are still in operation. At the time of this video, the Super Stallion is the largest and heaviest helicopter used by the U.S. military. Its massive payloads and weight the aircraft is expected to carry means the helicopter needs to be able to withstand these demands. The CH-53E is expected to remain in service until 2025, until the CH-53K King Stallion, also designed by Sikorsky, takes its place. It can reach speeds of 172 miles per hour with a range of 621 miles. The upgrades from its previous version means that three General Electric T-64 GD-416 turboshaft engines propel the aircraft, carrying a crew of four, a pilot, co-pilot, crew chief, and mechanic slash gunner. The Super Stallion is equipped with GPS, Doppler radar, and ANVIS HUD sensors. In terms of weaponry, it carries 7.62mm and 50 caliber guns. For communications, it has ultra-high frequency, 
very high frequency and high frequency radios, as well as IFF identification systems. Impressively, it can carry a 26,000 pound light armored vehicle, 16 tons of cargo at a range of 50 miles and back. It can carry 37 troops or 55 soldiers with centerline seats installed. Alternatively, its cargo lifting capability is a maximum weight of 13.6 tons internally or 14.5 tons outside the vehicle. It's also capable of lifting an LAV-25 armored vehicle or M198 howitzer complete with crew and ammunition. Its window-mounted 50 caliber machine guns, chaff and flare dispensers are present for anti-air defense. It's also equipped with an in-flight refueling probe for limitless range and a forward-looking infrared imager for night flying and navigation in all weathers. This equipment makes assault transport of Marine ground forces a lot smoother in all conditions. The Stallion's capability of being able to resupply Marines at the front line super quickly is what sets this helicopter apart from its peers. In 2000, after two decades of service, the U.S. Marine Corps announced a program to upgrade the Stallion to extend its service life to 2025. These upgrades saw improvements including a new engine, a large increase in payload capacity, all composite rotor, elastomeric rotor head, and a glass cockpit with fly-by-wire controls. There is a variant of the Stallion known as the MH-53E Sea Dragon. This was requested by the Navy for airborne anti-mine missions. To help carry out this role, it has enlarged sponsons to give the helicopter significantly more fuel storage and endurance. It can be fitted with up to seven 300 US gallon ferry tanks internally. The digital flight control system has also had bespoke changes to help tow minesweeping gear. The prototype of this aircraft made its first flight towards the end of 1981 and was introduced into the Navy at the beginning of 1986. A total of 46 Sea Dragons were purchased by the Navy. Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stallion represents a workhorse of the U.S. military. The heavy load helicopter has now been in service longer than many people watching this video have been alive, and the weight that it can carry defies logic when you take into account the size and ability of the aircraft. It took many iterations for Sikorsky to get to the point of introducing the helicopter into service, but when it did, it wasn't going anywhere for many years. The stallion may now be in its twilight, but the U.S. owes a huge amount to this loyal water carrier. What do you think of the Super Stallion? Let us know in the comments, and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Spotlight for more. Thanks for watching. The Defiant X helicopter, also known as the SB-1 Defiant, is a collaboration between engineering giants Sikorsky and Boeing. It's a state-of-the-art aircraft designed to replace the iconic UH-60 Blackhawk as the U.S. Army's future long-range assault aircraft. The Defiant X has recently been edged out of contract by rival vehicle Bell V-280 Valor, but this hasn't stopped Sikorsky from challenging the decision, such as the faith they have behind their offering. In this video, we're going to see why they have so much confidence in the Defiant X. The Defiant helicopter is a modern, fully integrated vertical lift aircraft, which has been developed by Boeing and Sikorsky for the U.S. Army's joint multi-role technology demonstration of the future vertical lift program. This program has been set up to develop two new aircraft for the U.S. Army a future long-range assault aircraft, and a future attack reconnaissance aircraft. The former represents the category that the Defiant fits into, and the project to design it has been spurred on by the Army's need for a new fleet of helicopters for the next phase of warfare. This aircraft was built to meet the attack and assault needs of the Army, along with the requirements of the U.S. Marine Corps, which include long-range transportation, infiltration, and resupply. The development of the aircraft was split into two parts, with each company taking ownership of each phase. Sikorsky was tasked with leading the development of Phase 1, which was to commence building a helicopter based off their X-2 design. Phase 2 was led by Boeing, and its purpose was to develop and demonstrate the aircraft's mission systems. 
Between these two companies, it was thought that they would have a very good chance of producing an aircraft fit for the Army's requirements, due to the fact that their transport helicopters make up the majority of the current fleet. Early indicators weren't positive as far as collaboration goes, because the last time the two companies joined forces to build a helicopter was for the RAH-60 Comanche, which started in the 1980s and was cancelled in 2004 after a bill of $7 billion. The companies blamed requirement creep as the reason for the failure of the project and were a lot more optimistic going into the development with Defiant. After naming its suppliers in 2015, the first test flight was planned for 2017 but suffered several delays before getting off the ground. Firstly, there was an additional requirement requested by the U.S. Army to implement automated fiber placement blade manufacture. Then further delays pushed back the adjusted date of summer 2018. Tests were then scheduled to trial the turbo shafts, transmission, and rotors at West Palm Beach, Florida by the end of 2018. Ground tests were also meant to happen before the end of the year with the hope that there would be a flight to reach 270 kilometers per hour within six months. Eventually, testing did start in early 2019 after an unveiling at the end of 2018. The tests were carried out at the planned site in Florida and started out with 15 hours of ground testing before it was allowed to fly three months later. The Defiance first flight was in March, but it wasn't long before flights were grounded due to a bearing issue in the main rotor. Testing was allowed to continue in the autumn, and the aircraft managed to reach speeds of an impressive 390 kilometers per hour. By the end of the year, the helicopter had clocked up a good amount of successful flight time. 26 hours in 31 flights. The SB-1 Defiant has been designed to perform tight assault formations, close proximity landing, unique hovering, as well as high-speed and low-speed flights due to its large angular rates and precision attitude control capabilities. The fuselage of Defiant is composed of composite materials to achieve impressive strength and weight reductions. It also has a retractable landing gear, which gives it a sleek look and, from a practical perspective, gives less drag during flight. One of the most noticeable features of the aircraft on first look is its double rigid coaxial rotor system technology. This was used on the X-2 and S-97 Raider aircraft, which gave a great opportunity to test its functionality. The two rotors revolve in opposite directions, and this plays a part in reducing the net torque of the other rotor. The blades of the rotor are made from composite material, and this reduces vibrations as well as reducing the wear of the components. These materials also provide greater life and reduce costs to maintain the vehicle. Another feature of the helicopter is active vibrator control technology, which dampens vibrations from the rotors and delivers smooth lift with improved maneuverability. The rear fuselage integrates a pusher propulsor with the clutch. The reason for this is to help the Defiant reach speeds of approximately twice that of a conventional rotorcraft. This configuration also allows the aircraft to cover longer distances during missions that need more range to cover. The forward thrust offered by the pusher propulsor means the aircraft can rapidly displace itself from the flight path in high-threat environments. The propulsor is also twinned with an advanced drive system that ensures minimal transmission losses. In terms of propulsion, the Defiant is powered by a pair of Honeywell T-55 engines, which offer fuel savings, reliability, and maintainability. The X variant of the Defiant has a slightly different engine based on the T-55. It's a new HTS-7500 engine that powered the SB-1 demonstrator as the power plant. The other difference with the X is that Collins Aerospace were chosen to provide all three seating platforms and its Paragon as flight control computer. All of this helps the aircraft to fly at a maximum speed of 463 kilometers per hour and hover out of ground effect at an altitude of 6,000 feet. All of the upgrades provided in comparison to previous models produces greater range as well as endurance and also means that the Defiant is capable of carrying heavier payloads compared to its predecessors. The SB-1 can carry 12 fully combat-equipped troops on top of four crew members to wherever missions dictate. It also offers optimum space for medical evacuation operations where needed. The Defiant is an aircraft for the most versatile and dangerous tasks. Adding all this up makes us see why Sikorsky and Boeing were so quick to challenge the Army's decision to choose a rival helicopter as their preference. The Defiant remains one of the most impressive assault aircrafts ever designed. Its pace, maneuverability, and stealth make it an excellent combat vehicle 
but its ability to carry large payloads also makes it a very useful asset when it comes to combat. It remains to be seen whether the US military changes its mind on the SB-1 Defiant, but if it does, they're unlikely to regret their decision. What do you think about the Defiant? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Spotlight for more. Thanks for watching. The AH-64 Apache is the most successful attack helicopter of all time. It was born out of a need to hunt down the deadliest threats on the battlefield. The Apache got a starring role in the first Iraq War, when it really made a name for itself with the world watching. Since then, it's been a stalwart of the US military and allied countries around the world. Let's take a look at what makes it so special and, more importantly, so lethal. In the 1960s, the U.S. Army introduced its first attack helicopter, the AH-1 Cobra. The Cobra was very effective in Vietnam, but had limitations away from the jungle. The Cobra had only a single engine, which limited its payload and altitude. If this engine was damaged, it would also take out the entire aircraft. This helicopter also lacked a long-range sighting system, as well as long-range weapons to go with it. This meant the crew needed to perform the risky maneuver to get in close and strafe enemy targets. In the next decade, with Vietnam a thing of the past, the Army decided it needed a new attack helicopter. This one was to be designed from the ground up to deliver against ground targets. The need for this had turned to the Soviet Union and defending Western Europe from this superpower and the Warsaw Pact. If it came to war, NATO would be outnumbered by a huge amount of tanks, so an airborne tank killer was seen as the way forward. The Army had already begun fitting anti-tank missiles on Cobra helicopters to cope with this threat, but also wanted a new long-range missile as the helicopter's main source of firepower. This would be able to destroy tanks like the T-62 and T-72. The other reason the Army wanted a new helicopter was to protect their crews from loss of life. More than 5,000 helicopters were lost in the Vietnam War, which was far from sustainable. The Soviets were far more advanced than what they'd faced in the past, so the Army also wanted an attack helicopter that could survive a testing air defense environment. An armored cabin, blades, and two engines were considered non-negotiable upgrades for any second-generation aircraft. The new helicopter was designed in 1972 to meet these needs and take over from the AH-1 Cobra. The first Hughes YAH-64 prototype flew in September 1975. The AH-64 Apache then entered service in 1984, with the program coming under the control of McDonnell Douglas from August 1985 and Boeing from 1997. Since then, Boeing has delivered more than 2,700 AH-64 Apache attack helicopters to the U.S. Army and other armed forces. Currently, more than 1,275 Apache aircraft are in service with the U.S. Army and their allies internationally. As of spring 2023, the Apache has completed 5 million flight hours, including 1.3 million of these within combat operations. It was first used in combat in 1989 in the U.S. military with action in Panama and then in Operation Desert Storm, where the whole world watched live as a fleet stormed Iraq. It has also supported low-intensity peacekeeping operations worldwide, including Turkey, Bosnia, and Kosovo. It's powered by two GE T-700 turboshaft engines, which generate up to 1,695 shaft horsepower. This gives the Apache a top speed of 189 miles per hour. The four-bladed main rotor that helps achieve this speed can be folded for transport in a C-17 or C-5 transport plane. These engines are flat rated to provide high emergency power and large black hole IR suppressing exhaust systems. 
Other key features of the aircraft are a large, flat plate canopy with boron armor to protect the crew, multi-spar stainless steel and glass fiber rotor blades which can withstand 23mm hits, comprehensive avionics and weapon fits, and further measures to protect those inside, including crash-resistant seats and an airframe designed to withstand ballistic impact from guns up to 12.7mm caliber. The Apache's key capability that makes it so crucial on the battlefield is its ability to fire AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, which were new at the time the helicopter was introduced. This missile is a laser-guided anti-tank weapon with a range of 8 kilometers. This doubled the range of the older tow missile. The Apache can carry up to 16 of these missiles at any one time, which means a single helicopter can destroy an entire company of Soviet tanks without having to engage in close combat. If needed, a variation on this is that the Apache could carry eight Hellfires and two pods of 19 Hydra 70 70 mm unguided rockets, which are highly effective against dismounted infantry or light armored vehicles. There's also the ability to instead use four pods of Hydra 70 rockets. The only weapon built into the Apache is its M320 chain gun. This single barrel 30 mm cannon fires 8 ounce shells at a massive rate of 625 rounds per minute. These high explosive, dual purpose projectiles are perfect to take out enemy troops, soft skinned vehicles like trucks and jeeps, plus light armored vehicles like the BTR 70 armored personnel carrier. To help with the effectiveness of this weapon, it comes with a complex aiming system known as the Target Acquisition and Designation Site. This gives the ability for the crew to aim the weapon at a target by just pointing his or her head at it. Even with all this firepower, there was still another feature that would make this helicopter the most advanced of its kind, night vision. It also has the ability to discover camouflaged armor vehicles that are running their engines and producing a thermal signature. This also let Apache crews see through smoke screens, taking away a major advantage from an advancing enemy force. The Apache has received various upgrades since its introduction in the 80s. The first of the upgraded AH-64s was delivered to the U.S. Army in 2003. These were known as Block II and included upgrades to the digital communication system. In July 2005, the U.S. Army gave Boeing a development contract for Block III improvements and these entered service in 2011. Over the years, there have been other variations that can be distinguished by the letters A through E after the initial AH-64 call sign. Apache AH-64E is the latest version and features improved sensors and avionics, which makes it one of the most advanced multi-role combat helicopters in the world. In March 2017, a $3.4 billion agreement was signed between the U.S. Army and Boeing for 268 of these helicopters. They then completed the delivery of the 500th AH-64E to the U.S. Army in April 2020. Boeing plans to keep the Apache helicopter operational as far as the 2060s through upgrades and next-generation technologies including modular open systems architecture. What do you think about the Apache helicopter? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Spotlight for more. Thanks for watching. When it comes to transportation military helicopters, it's hard to look beyond the CH-47 Chinook. It's been in service since the 60s, and its various upgrades have turned it into one of the best in its class. Now this vehicle is seen all over the world as militaries have chosen to make it a staple in their fleet. Let's take a look at what makes this helicopter so special. When looking for a transport helicopter, originally the U.S. Army was interested in the Vertol 107, which became the CH-46 Sea Knight. In 1959, it decided to pick up a much bigger project that had been under development since 1956. 
This was a prototype of the Boeing Vertol Model 114 Chinook. Following this was the original CH-47A, which reached the U.S. Army in December 1962. Vertol built 349 of these before delivering 108 CH-47Bs with more powerful engines. This was then followed by 233 CH-47Cs with three 2,798 kilowatt engines, increased fuel with improved fiberglass blades and blade inspection systems. Between 1982 and 1998, over 480 of the U.S. Army's Chinooks were re-engineered to CH-47D standard with greatly enhanced improvements. The British RAF has also upgraded 32 of its surviving Chinooks to this standard as Chinook HC Mark IIs and also received a further eight new build HC Mark IIs, as well as nine HC Mark IIIs, which are equivalent to the U.S. Army's MH-47E Special Missions Helicopter. The MH-47 is fitted with terrain-following radar, additional fuel tanks, in-flight refueling probes, and many defensive modifications for operation behind enemy lines. The CH-47F is the latest version of the helicopter and was developed by Boeing from the previous CH-47D. The F version has new engines, upgraded airframe, and new avionics. It made its first test flight in 2001, and production started in 2006. Existing CH-47D can be upgraded to the CH-47F standard, or these can be newly produced if needed. By 2014, a total of 300 CH-47F helicopters were delivered to the U.S. in time for them to see action during the war in Afghanistan. The Chinook is used for the transportation of troops, artillery supplies, and equipment to the battlefield. Other roles include medical evacuation, aircraft recovery, parachute drop, search and rescue, disaster relief, firefighting, and heavy construction. The latest version features alterations to the airframe structure to lessen the effects of vibration, as well as other structural enhancements to the cockpit, cabin, aft section, pylon, and ramp. The Rockwell Collins Digital Cockpit features a common avionics architecture system with improved electrical, avionics, and communication systems. The improved, powerful Honeywell T55GA 714A engines are fitted with full authority digital engine control and have a thrust of 3,529 kilowatts. The operating range has been increased to 609 kilometers with a mission radius of 370.4 kilometers. Self-sealing fuel tanks are mounted in external fairings on the sides of the fuselage. These hold 3,900 liters worth of fuel. Three extra fuel tanks can be carried in the cargo area if needed, and the range of the helicopter can be extended by in-flight refueling. There's another version of the Chinook, known as the multi-year two configured CH-47F, which was delivered to the U.S. Army in the summer of 2014. This configuration has a new cargo on-off loading system that helps for rapid reconfiguration of the aircraft floor during cargo missions. A cargo platform health environment system has also been added to enable health monitoring of the platform in real time. This helps to bring down maintenance time and cost. The cockpit houses two pilots and an observer. An advanced digital cockpit has been designed between Boeing and Honeywell. This is equipped with multifunction liquid crystal displays and electronic flight instruments. The crew has access to Anvis 7 night vision goggles from Elbit Systems, and the cockpit is night vision goggle compatible. Three machine guns can be mounted on the Chinook, including two in the crew door on the starboard side and one window mounted on the port side. In 2008, Northrop Grumman was given a contract to equip the Royal Netherlands Air Force's CH-47Fs with an AAR-54 missile warning system. The systems were completed and added in early January 2010. The helicopter also has a vast array of countermeasures. The Special Forces variant of the helicopter, MH-47E, is fitted with the ATK AN AAR-47 Missile Approach Warner, Northrop Grumman ALQ-162 Shadow Box Jammer, ITT ALQ-136 Pulse Jammer, Raytheon APR-39A Radar Warner, and BA Systems Integrated Defense Solutions M130 Chaff and Flare Dispenser. The CH-47's main purpose is to transport cargo. It has a triple hook system which provides stability to hefty external loads, 
or the capacity for multiple external loads. Payloads such as 155mm howitzers can be transported at speeds up to 260 km per hour using this triple hook load configuration. The cabin also provides 42 cubic meters of cargo space and 21 square meters of cargo floor area, which can accommodate two high-mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicles or one of these together with 105mm howitzer and gun crew. The main cabin can hold from 33 fully equipped troops to 50 troops, depending on the equipment carried and seating configuration. If needed for medical evacuation, the cabin can accommodate 24 stretchers. Ramp operations are able to be carried out on the water using an optional power down ramp and water dam configuration. Although the F version of the Chinook has not long been in service, future upgrades to this workhorse have been planned. More powerful engines, new rotor blades derived from the cancelled RAH-66 Comanche are due to be installed soon and the helicopter will have a strengthened airframe and will be capable of carrying more payload. The planned future versions are nominally referred to as CH-47G and CH-47H. These vehicles are planned to remain operational with the U.S. Army beyond 2060. This is over 100 years after the type first entered service. More than 1,179 Chinooks are thought to be operational worldwide. Boeing delivered more than 480 CH-47D Chinooks to the U.S. Army and National Guard alone. The U.S. Army Chinooks have since undergone digital improvement to keep the aircraft up to speed with the battlefield for more than 20 years. What do you think about the CH-47? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Spotlight for more. Thanks for watching.